while Russian bombs rain down on Ukrainian soil. Russian officials are preparing for OSCE talks. There are already several requests for meetings, including from Western representatives. Of course, we will talk with them. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe was born during the Cold War, billed as a platform for East-West dialogue, with the remit ranging from arms control to election oversight. More recently, the OSCE sent observers to eastern Ukraine to monitor a ceasefire. But when Russia launched its full-scale invasion last year, it blew apart the delicate political balance that enabled the OSCE to function. Kyiv wants Moscow kicked out the club, but organisation rules make that unlikely. That means the 57-country body is one of the few which still includes both Russia and Ukraine, plus Kyiv's Western allies. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is set to attend this week, prompting a boycott from Ukraine and the Baltic states. The main threat for Europe and European security architecture is Russia. So for me it is impossible to sit around the same table in OSAE together with Lavrov, who actually should uh, uh, be put on trial about the uh, crimes of aggression. Current OSCE Chair North Macedonia says its invitation to Russia's foreign minister is strictly business. Lavrov is not coming to Skopje in a way. Lavrov is coming to the OSCE, just as he went to UN in New York a few months ago. But, uh, and I won't be meeting him as a foreign minister of North Macedonia, but as an OSCE chairman in office. Most ministers will attend, but they'll be up against Russia's continued blockade on many OSCE decisions. Now more than ever, there is a need for more cooperation and security in Europe, which is why, as Foreign Minister, I'm traveling to Skopje for this meeting and why I'm doing everything I can, together with colleagues, to ensure that the Russian Foreign Minister can't achieve his goal of destroying the OSCE. But while attacks on Ukraine continue, the body created to help thaw the Cold War seems unable to pull itself out of political paralysis. And DW's chief international editor, Richard Walker, is at that OSCE summit. Richard, the presence of Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov at this summit is causing quite a bit of friction, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's right, Terry. I mean, it's been a very live issue. We, we saw some of the debate in the report just there, you know, one side saying, that you simply cannot share a stage, you cannot share a conference hall with Sergei Lavrov, that this is kind of giving him a, a, a stage for, to spread uh, Russian propaganda. The other side, including, say, Annalena Baerbock, the, the, the German foreign minister, say, well, actually, that's the reason that you have to be here, because if you don't show up, then you leave uh, the stage completely free uh, to Lavrov uh, to spread Russia's message, to try to, to stoke divisions between the West and their partners. Um, so, so that's kind of the state of the debate. What is for sure is that Sergei Lavrov certainly will be using this occasion uh, to, to spread Russia's message through Russia's propaganda, if you like. He will be, I mean, we heard it earlier this year, say in September, at uh, the G20 summit in India, when he held a press conference at the end of the occasion, presenting the summit as a big success for Russia and trying to portray the West as the spoilers who are trying to hijack occasions uh, of this diplomatic nature uh, to push their own agenda. So very much a, a sort of stage set here for, for, for diplomatic accusations from both sides. Um, but yeah, high stakes meeting, I think, much more so than usual meetings of this Okay, that uh, that was Richard Walker there, our chief uh, international uh, editor who uh, was joining us from Skopje in North Macedonia at that summit of the OSCE. But the line, we sort of, lo I think we have the line back now to Richard. Richard, are you back with us? Great. Uh, so uh, I, I'm with you, Terry. Very good. Uh, so, you know, hugely controversial presence there with Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister at that OSCE meeting. Uh, can the OSCE survive this? Can it weather this crisis, Richard? Yeah, well, it, it, it's really been quite an open question in recent months. I mean, there's been a, 
a, a big debate about which country should chair the OSCE organization next year. So North Macedonia here in the Balkans has been chairing it this year. There's been a debate about which country should chair it. Estonia wanted to chair it. It had the support of the West, but Russia blocked that. There's been a last minute compromise that Malta should do that. And it looks like that's secure. So that's probably going to happen. And then the following year is already agreed that it's Finland. So on that kind of basic level, is there even a sort of a, a, a home for the OSCE, if you like? Um, that looks like it's settled. But other questions like who fills the top jobs of the organization, the top staff jobs, that still has to be agreed here. And also, is this organization sustainable at all, given the war in Ukraine? That remains an open question. And that really all depends on what the uh, the next couple of years look like in this war in Ukraine. Is there any move towards peace? Can the OSCE play some kind of role or does it become a, a completely outmoded organization from another era? Richard, thank you very much. Our chief international editor, Richard Walker, there in Skopje at that OSCE summit.